Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in to Behind the Story on Borderless Magazine. I'm Diane Bukhalil, Borderless Magazine's engagement reporter, and today I'll be talking to Nestor Gomez, who is a storyteller, creator, and the host of the show 80 Minutes Around the World that features immigrant stories. Today, not only will we be talking about 80 Minutes Around the World, but also uh, about Nestor's new book called Your Driver Has Arrived. Um, so make sure to stay tuned to hear all about it. Uh, also, make sure to check out more immigration stories on our website, borderlessmag.org. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to our weekly newsletter to never miss a story. Thank you so much, Nestor, for being here with us today. Thank you for having me. Sure. Uh, so to start off, I want to ask you, how did you become a storyteller? Yes, I used I became a storyteller because I used to have a fear of public speaking. Um, and you'll probably be like, that's like the worst reason to become a storyteller. Well, I used to story when I was a kid. Uh, when I came to this country, I was undocumented and I didn't have, uh, um, and I didn't know the language. So I didn't have a voice. So for a long time, I didn't have a voice because I used to stutter and I used to be afraid of public speaking. So I used to write everything. I used to write everything on pieces of paper. I wrote a lot of poetry and I went to a story slam, at a poetry slam at the Green Mill. They do the poetry slams at the Green Mill. I think it used to be every Sunday. So I went there and wanted to tell a, po a poem on the stage, but then all my poetry was, was in Spanish and the Green Mill was all in English and I chicken out. But there was a flyer for a storytelling event, for a mod storytelling event. And my wife and I decided, oh, let's go to this storytelling event, see, see, see what this is all about. We've never been to it one. So we went and I heard some amazing stories. I heard Archie A. Jum Jum telling a story there. And I heard all the storytellers, but Archie's story really impacted me. And I remember telling my wife, oh, I could do that. And she's like, maybe. And then I'm like, oh, I, I, and I could actually win one of these contests. And she's like, calm down, you're, you're going too fast. Uh, and she gave, she got me a, pre, a ticket for a story study slam as a birthday present. And I almost chicken out, but I, a couple of days before, as I was working on my story, I was thinking, people not, people are not gonna want to hear my story. My story is about immigration. I have an accent. People don't care about my story. And I heard another story telling another storyteller person, which is a Lily B. She came out on the Mod Radio Hour and she was telling a story about uh, Homo Park, about her abuela, about mangoes. And I was like, "Whoa, people need to hear these stories." So I went to the storytelling slam that night to put my my name on the hat. I put my name in the hat, and I almost chicken out three times. My wife is like, no, nope, we're here. You're not going anywhere. No, nope, you, you work on your story. No, nope, stay here. And I went up. I told my story and I won the night. And uh, I, I didn't stop telling stories after that. I just kept telling stories. That's amazing. Well, you are, you did win over 40 Moth Slams and you're a three-time Chicago Moth Grand Slam winner in your book <laughs> that I'm reading. <laughs> And so um, I guess let's go straight into your new book called Your Driver Has Arrived. So you were a driver for a ride sharing company. So what made you decide to write about your experience? Yes, um, as, I, as, as, I, as I told you, I, I started telling stories at the mod and I continue going to the mod and telling a bunch of stories. And one day I was going to a slam for the mod and I had a story ready. And so I told a story to my wife and she's like, maybe you don't tell a story tonight. So I told her like, I had this idea, idea of a story, which was one of the stories that's included in the book about driving an old lady to the train station. And I told her basically what the story was and she's like, maybe you should tell that one. So that night she drove to the slam as I was thinking about the story and I put my name in the hat and that story went really well. It went, it went really well. It won the slam, actually. Um, so that's when I decided maybe I should write more, more write-sharing stories. 
and I wrote a bunch of ride sharing stories and I told a bunch of ride sharing stories at the mall. And I also wanted to, um, I usually tell a lot of immigration stories and I wanted to reach a different audience. And I figured that by writing a bunch of ride sharing stories and put them together on a book, I was going to be able to reach an audience, a larger audience, because there's a lot of people that drive for, for these ride sharing uh, companies, but also a lot of people that take these ride sharing companies. So I figured that I could reach out to them through my stories and I could connect with them through my stories. Yeah, and you have a lot of stories that are good, that are bad, that are funny as well. And uh, one that caught my attention is on page 22. Uh, you, were, you picked up someone and you were having a conversation and he asked you, where are you from? And you told him, I'm Guatemalan. And uh, while you were exchanging conversation, he blurted out some stereotypes about the Latinx community, uh, including comments about building a wall is better to keep the immigrants out and uh, you know other comments as well. And while you were reflecting uh, your thoughts in the passage, you had a quote that said, uh, his comments already built a wall between us. And so uh, could you talk a little bit more about that experience or any thoughts you have? Yes. Um, well, yeah, I, I pick up somebody who did not agree with the immigration experience, so didn't agree with having immigrants in this country. And of course, I am an immigrant. And his comments, his stereotype comments, really hurt me, really got to me, and I was getting really upset. And what I mean by he built a wall is that the way that he was reacting, the way that he was talking about immigrants was getting me upset. I get into a lot of conversations with people on Twitter, on social media, on Facebook. And sometimes we, you, you, you are able to have an exchange of ideas, a dialogue with people. Uh, but there are people that are really, um, you cannot have a conversation with them because they either try to insult you, they try to offend you. Um, and those people, those, those people that are trying to just to upset you, it's better not to have a conversation with them because things can get out of hands. Uh, you can really get too emotional. And with this driver, it was better for me to walk away from that conversation because he, when we tell stories, we try to build bridges across communities. We try to tell people our experience. I don't try to tell people what you're doing is wrong or what you're thinking is wrong or this is the right way to do. What we try to do when we tell stories is to share our experiences so people can understand a little bit better about what our experiences are. And that's how we try to build bridges. But with this person, I, I felt that I couldn't have a conversation with the person anymore. So his comments, his insults were building a wall between us. Yeah, and uh, thank you for talking about that. And so I wanna ask you, what is your favorite ride sharing story in your book? Yes, um, I get asked this question a lot because I don't only tell ride sharing stories, I tell immigration stories, I tell uh, family stories, I tell stories about going to school, I tell story, stories about going to work, so different kind of stories. But uh, it's really hard to pick one that is my favorite because I have one story that is my favorite because it's the first story that I ever told at the most. And I have a story that is my favorite because it's the first story, the story about my son or my daughter. But for these ride sharing stories, if I had to pick a favorite one, it would have to be the one about driving the lady to the, to the train station because that's the story that started the whole book. Uh, you mentioned um, the story about driving the old lady to the train station. Do you mind like telling us a little bit about that? Like uh, what happened? Yes, for those that have not read the book, Read the book, get the book. For those that have not read the book, uh, the story is basically, um, I go to pick up a, a, a guy because a guy uh, has ordered the, the ride. And when I get there, he's telling me that I need to drive his mother to the, to the train station. And he wants me to drive her and get her there like in 15 minutes. And I'm looking at the time, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to do it because it's rush hour. And he's like, please, please do it. And just as soon as he gives me the look, I know that his mom is driving him crazy. So I agreed to take his mom and I told him like, I'm not gonna 
get her on time and he's like, I don't care, you get her out of my house. Um, so when the lady gets in the car, she immediately like start complaining that, I, that my people are always making her late. And I don't know if she means like right sharing people or like immigrants, but I'm like, I'm gonna get her there on time. But uh, as I'm driving, she's like complaining that I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna make her late, and uh, and the UPS is telling me which way to go, and I told them both that I know what I'm doing, uh, and I and I I don't want to review the ending of the story, so you could so people could get the book, but it's basically about driving this old lady to the train station. And uh, if your audience is, uh, if the audience or viewers are interested in uh, getting the book, where can they get it? Yes, uh, I have a, a website. It's called NestorGomezStoryteller.com, and you can find information about my book there. You can find information about upcoming shows, and you can find a bunch of videos of stories that I told. Great. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> thank you for having me. <laughs>